Um, so I think the opportunity to benefit is enormous. Yeah, I mean, I uh, was saying on stage, you know, when we had the panel session that digital technology can really help transform, particularly the operational and maintenance phase. Uh, things like the use of augmented reality for sure, uh, to provide more information to the, you know, the maintenance techs doing the projects uh, and doing the maintenance overhauls uh, is going to be good. Um, so yeah, the opportunity is big. The real challenge is, can we actually change the uh, industry and adopt faster, move faster on adoption of this technology? So yes, I think there are probably many comparable schemes at the moment because everyone is working on digital and digitalization. Uh, our digital program uh, in SBM consists of two parts. One part is looking at digitalizing our EPC part of the business, uh, and the other part is how we digitalize our operations and maintenance part of the business. Um, and that's what we call our digital FPSO. Um, so that's progressing very well. Um, we have now implemented that on four of our operating facilities in Brazil. Um, and at the moment, we're using that to provide real-time data to onshore. Last, uh, last month, we opened our operational uh, real-time center uh, called OIPOC uh, in Monaco, where we're providing uh, expert support to the Brazilian fleet uh, using that real-time data. So we, we continue to make good progress and we have a long roadmap ahead in terms of further development and enhancement of that program. So yeah, I mean, we see a lot of demand increasing in, uh, in South America, particularly in uh, Brazil and also uh, in Mexico. Uh, we will also see come into the market, I think, quite significantly. Uh, North America, I, I, don't, we, I don't think we see so much demand in North America just because it doesn't have the same reserves and it also competes heavily with shale uh, development and also the type of uh, infrastructure development in the Gulf of Mexico is very different. Uh, tends to be more semi-submersible or spar type installations, so it's, it's not such the same fit of technology. Um, in terms of how things like the emergence of Africa might, have, might impact, I mean, I think it's a difficult question to answer really in the long term. Um, I think what you really see is that uh, the big companies will focus probably more on the big opportunities um, and therefore some of the smaller FPSO contractors will be more attracted perhaps into these new markets, uh, moving away from the North Sea perhaps and moving into Africa. Uh, but we've been operating in Africa for quite a long time and delivered a number of projects there. Uh, we have a construction yard in, uh, in Angola where we do a lot of our local content construction there. Um, but at the moment, our exclusive focus is really more on Latin America and on uh, South America. So, I. I really believe we need to do something different as an industry. I think that starts with working together uh, early with clients, right? So that we work together in the development of the field and we move away from this sort of transactional competitive bidding. Uh, that certainly worked for SBM uh, quite successfully so far over the last two or three years, we've been closely engaged with clients. We've also been implementing our fast forward uh, program internally, which is a new way uh, to design and deliver an FPSO. And that's required that we reorganize internally as well and align how we execute projects with the new product that we have, uh, turning it more towards a kind of manufacturing type approach uh, to delivering an FPSO than the traditional bespoke engineering approach. Really, it all comes down to, you know, do companies really have an appetite to change, right? And those that will be mostly successful and, you know, earn the most profit in the future and basically be sustainable in the future are those that will make that commitment uh, to continuous change and continuously improving.